What's going on everybody, Kleepas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks for the Nokia G400 5G that you might not know about. Now before we go any further, as always, I do want to remind you to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to learn more about this phone, I will be linking to several other videos about it in the description, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing I want to show you here is a feature called Adaptive Brightness. What this does is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It basically adjusts the brightness of your display based on your environment. So if you're outside in the sun, for example, it's going to brighten things up to make it easier to see. But if you're indoors, maybe at night, it's going to dim things. And this is going to save battery and make the display a little bit easier on your eyes. So to turn this feature on, what you're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to display. And from the display menu, as you can see right here, adaptive brightness is not on by default, so simply toggle it on. And as you can see, things adjusted immediately. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to make a screen recording. So to do this, what you're going to want to do is pull down the shade twice. So one, two. If you haven't done anything with this menu, go to the second page. And screen record start is going to be right here. So tap on the button. And it's going to give you a couple different options. First, select your audio. By default, it's going to be device audio. So for example, if you're watching a video, playing a game, listening to music, stuff like that, that's what it's going to record. But if you hit the drop down, you can also have it record the microphone. So if you want to narrate something, or you can have it record device audio and the microphone. And if you don't want any sound, you can simply leave it off. Because as you can see here, by default, it's not going to record anything. So definitely keep in mind, if you do want sound in your screen recording, be sure to toggle this on. In addition to this, you can have it show touches on the screen. So when you turn this on, whenever you touch the screen, there's going to be a little cursor wherever you're touching. This is really useful if you're trying to show someone how to do something, for example, because it definitely makes it a lot easier to follow. Once you have all the options you want, go ahead and hit start. There's going to be a countdown. And now we are recording, so you can do whatever you want. So there's the little cursor right here. And when you're done, pull down the shade and hit stop. And now it's saved right to your photos. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to change the refresh rate. Now I've done a lot on this phone, so I actually don't even remember where it started at. I think for whatever reason it started at 60 hertz. But keep in mind, this phone does have a 120 hertz refresh rate, or at least it can if you set it to it. So in case it's not like that on your phone, or maybe it is and you want to change it back to 60 to save some battery, whatever the case may be, if you do want to change your refresh rate, let me show you how to do it. So what we're going to do is go to settings, so pull down the shade, settings right here. From here, go to display. And from this menu, scroll down, and you're going to find the refresh rate right here. So as you can see, I currently have it at adaptive, and this is going to be the 120 hertz. It's going to make things a little bit smoother, and in general, using the phone is going to feel a little bit more premium. But if you want, you can change it to standard, and this is basically going to be the normal 60 hertz refresh rate, and this can save a little battery. Now that being said, in my experience, I haven't really seen that much of a difference, because after all, when you have it set to adaptive, it's not like the refresh rate is 120 hertz 24-7. It really only increases it when you're doing something like scrolling, or maybe watching a video or playing a game, where you're actually going to benefit from it. But again, definitely not to have these options. So if you haven't already, I definitely recommend going to this menu and checking to see whether you're at 60 hertz or 120. Again, I personally just recommend sticking it at 120, but if you don't really care about how it looks and you want to get the best battery life, then you can always do 60 hertz instead. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to edit your quick menu. Now we kind of touched on this in the beginner's guide, but in case you missed that one, I want to go over it one more time. This right here is the quick menu. I don't know if it's actually called that, but essentially this is going to give you quick access to a bunch of different features. And while it does have a lot of useful stuff in here already, you can can actually customize it even more. So to do this, all you have to do is hit this little pencil icon right here. And this is going to show you basically at the top what you already have in the menu, and then the features you can add below this line. So if, for example, you want to add dark mode, what you're going to do is press and hold, drag it up to the top. There we go. And say you want to get rid of something, like Wi-Fi calling for example. Basically it's going to be the same thing, so press and hold, drag it to the other side, and there we go. So now that's no longer in the menu. Now what you're going to do is hit the back button. And now if we go back to the menu, as you can see, dark mode is in here and Wi-Fi calling is gone. In addition to this, if you ever want to reset it back to the default, what you're going to do is go back to the edit screen, hit these dots right here, and hit reset. And now if we go back, the menu is going to be right back to the default. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to show and hide your battery percentage on the status bar. Now as you can see right now, the battery percentage is not there. All we have is the icon and I personally like it like this. It makes everything look really minimalistic. And when it comes to a status bar, that's definitely a nice thing. But if you do want to get a better idea of where you're at battery wise, then you can actually put the battery percentage up here. So to do this, what you're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to battery. And in the battery menu, as you can see right here, by default the battery percentage is going to be off, but if you toggle it on. Now it's going to show up there all the time. 
But if you do want to get an idea of your battery life, but you want to leave it looking minimalistic like this, you don't actually have to have it up here full time. All you have to do is pull down the shade like this, and the battery percentage is going to be in here no matter what. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to disable your Google feed. Now in case you're wondering what this is, basically by default, when you swipe like this, it's going to show you this news feed, which yours probably doesn't look like this, but you get the idea. It's basically a giant news feed that shows you a bunch of random information. Now for me personally, I'm just not a big fan of this. I really just don't think it's necessary to have an entire news feed on your home screen. So if you're like me and you never use this, I'm going to show you how to turn it off. So what you're going to do is press and hold your finger on any blank spot on your home screen like this. This menu is going to show up. From here, go to home settings. And in this menu, where it says show Google app, as you can see by default this is on, all you got to do is toggle it off. And now if you go back to the home screen, the Google feed is no longer going to work. So while I do understand some people actually use it, and that's great, I'm definitely glad we still have the option to turn it off. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to use split screen. Now with the Nokia G400 5G, this phone doesn't have any crazy shortcuts for it like some phones do, but all the same, split screen is a really easy feature to use, and I feel like it's kind of easy to overlook it. So what you're going to do is open your first app, so I'm going to go to Chrome, from here, go to your recent apps, press and hold on the icon, and from here, go to split screen, and now you can select whatever other app you want. And keep in mind, split screen is not compatible with every single app, so don't be surprised if it doesn't work on everything. But for this, I'm going to go to settings. And now, as you can see, we are in split screen, so definitely pretty cool. And then if you want one app to take over, you can grab this little bar right here, pull it up or down. And there we go. So again, definitely a really easy feature to use. Now I'm going to show you a quick way to get to your camera. Now opening the camera app on your home screen is easy enough, but if you're doing something else on your phone, like maybe you're browsing the web for example, and you want to capture something quickly in the moment, this shortcut definitely makes it a lot more convenient. So no matter what you're doing on your phone, if you want to open your camera, simply double press the power key like this, and it's going to open the camera right up. So there we go. We're going to try that one more time, this time on an app. And there we go. And one more time with the display locked. And there we go. So as you can see there, definitely a real convenient feature. And it's cool that it works pretty much anywhere. Now I'm going to show you how to get to your NFC settings. Now NFC is technically on by default, so after you set it up for the first time, you're probably not going to have to mess with this too much. But in case you ever need to see your NFC settings, what you're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to connected devices. From this menu, go to connection preferences. And from here, as you can see, NFC is right here. And in this menu, again, by default, NFC is going to be on. But if you want to turn it off for whatever reason, you can always turn it off here. In addition to this, if you go to contactless payments, you can set up your payment default. So as you can see, it's currently set to Google Pay. But if you have maybe Amex Pay, for example, you can go here. And if you do have any other payment service, you can set it to that if you want. The last thing I'm going to show you is a feature called Prevent Ringing. Now, this is basically a shortcut that's going to mute your phone. Maybe not the most useful thing in the world, but it's definitely still a cool thing to know about. So to do this, what you're going to do is go to Settings. From here, go to System. From this menu, go to Gestures. And as you can see, prevent ringing is right here at the bottom. In order to actually enable this feature, we do actually have to change something. So by default, when you press and hold the power button, it's actually going to turn on the assistant. So if we go like this, as you can see, the assistant is right here. So what you're going to want to do is go to press and hold power button. Again, by default, hold for assistant is going to be on. So toggle it off. And now if you go back, we can now turn on prevent ringing. So by default, prevent ringing is going to go to vibrate. So now with this feature on, if you press the power key and the volume up key at the same time, it's going to automatically put the phone in vibrate mode. So like this, there we go. And that's pretty much it. And of course you can do mute if you want, and that's going to completely silence it. So definitely not the craziest feature or anything, but if you're maybe going into a meeting or seeing a movie and you want to make absolute sure your phone is silenced, it's definitely still a nice feature to have. But this concludes my tips and tricks for the Nokia G400 5G. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, I will be linking to several other videos about it in the description, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.